Welcome to Winning in the Shadows. I'm Andy. That's Jim. Hit the like button while we're watching this and join the Discord. Free Discord with free plays. Lots of discussion. The link is in the description of this video. Welcome to the breakdown of UFC Fight Night. Tabora versus Spivak. Uh, let's get right into it, Jim. We're going to start with the Contender Series matchup that we didn't want. It was the one that we needed. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to get our girl, Alan Carr, here. Versus Stephanie Luciano. These two fought to a draw. It was a very interesting contender series match. What do we think about this one? It's a rematch. So that right there throws a monkey wrench in a lot of things. And, you know, history-wise, rematches are sometimes very tough to predict. Um, I think that Alan Carr has improved her cardio. And that was really what got Luciano back into this fight. I went back and rewatched that fight. And Alan Carr really dominated those first two rounds. And it was just that her gas tank went away, which got Luciano in the fight. Now, I like Luciano as a fighter to be able to fight through 10 minutes of being worked and come back and fight strong and almost get that finish and 10 8 her. That's great. But, you know, what she been doing, who she been fighting compared to, you know, Alan Carr. So I have a feeling that this looks like more of the same. I see this going the distance um, decision for Alan Carr. I think she can bank two rounds. Kind of the same way she did in the first fight and just kind of get by in that third. And maybe she just doesn't get 10 8 this time and it's a clear cut win. So give me Alan Carr by decision to start this night off. You know, this kind of strikes me as the sim very similar to Sam Hughes last week where we're getting a plus 150, plus 140 fighter. And I'm not really sure where they came up with this line. So, yeah, so in Contender Series, Alan Carr is a very she's a small fighter. Mm -hmm. um, she's feisty. She will get you to the ground and really can't do much with it. Like, I, I seriously don't think her arms are long enough to do many submissions, not against UFC fighters. Um, ground and pound. Not really. <laughs> she doesn't have that kind mm -hmm. of power or any, you know, but she's got good position. She's strong and she'll hold you down and just eats up a lot of minutes. And then Luciano is much more of a striker, but you, like you said, like what's Luciano been doing the last time we saw her, she got taken down, and held down by Alan Carr. And then the only reason why she was able to even tie is because Alan Carr was dead to the world. Uh, I'm with you. I went back, back and watched the Alan Carr um, ran Amanda. I got to tell you in the moment, I thought this was a horrific decision that Amanda clearly won. I kind of changed my mind a little bit. I didn't think it was a great decision, mm. but I got it. I, I like, yeah, you could see it. You could kind of see it. So Alan Carr, Terrible striking defense. She still hasn't fixed that. Maybe she's worked on that a little bit. She can get hit, but she pushes forward. She doesn't doesn't give up. And round three cardio was so much better um, in this one. So I, I'm with you that I think Alan Carr, just her activity is good enough to win over some of these judges. And if she does, if she wins the first round, then Luciano's in big trouble. I, mm -hmm. I, th I think Luciano almost has to have a first one because I'm not sure this round three is going to be a layup like it was in the last one. So I'm with the Allen car is the only way that to, that you can play this one. Yarno Aaron's in Yusuf Zalal. Uh, Zalal's not f fighting a hurt Billy Corntillo this time. <laughs> Aaron's we did really good on Aaron's uh, in his last fight. Uh, we were one of the few people that were on him over Steven Nguyen and Moy. Boy, did he look so much better than he did against Sungwoo Choi. That being said, is he good enough to pull the upset against the law? What do you think? I don't think he's good enough to pull the upset. That being said, uh, I don't like this number on Zalal. It's super steep. It's it's not enough. We're the only ones talking about the fact that Billy Q was injured. Like, it's the big amazing. thing came out, and they're like, oh, he worked Billy Q. Well, <laughs> yeah, he I worked, worked injured Billy, Billy Q. Billy Q. If it's a one-armed man, you know, like beating a one-legged guy in an ass-kicking contest. He, he's going to win. So I don't credit that win as much as a lot of people are saying. I also don't credit, Aaron, credit Aaron's win against Stephen Gwynn at all. He is atrocious. And <laughs> we called that one, and that's why we were on him. So I think we got two guys that are overhyped that are going to fight in a very close fight. Um, I don't think this fight finishes. I think Aaron stays safe. Uh, people are hyping up the grappling of Zalal. Now, that being said, Zalal's flying high right now. He's on a win streak. Life is good. 
He's got his boo, Macy Barber, feeling good. You better, so, you better be feeling yourself. I, he better be, right? He's gonna, he's set right now. Um, I like the gym he's training at. There's been a lot of talk about him looking fantastic out of the gym. So I, if I have to pick a side here in Salah, I hate the number. I do think it goes the distance. Salah by decision is probably a really good look. The thing is already up to minus four fifty-five. Unusive Zalal. I mean, if you 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 can't play Zalal at minus four fifty-five. No. Um, and Jardo Aaron's. I like the I like the um, kind of adjustments that he made. His striking looked a lot better. If Aaron's can keep it on the feet, I think he's going to win a striking battle. But his takedown defense is bad. I think that's kind of where you're getting this this yeah. number from. I just I don't see that laying that kind of number. I'm with you that over two and a half at minus two thirty is a fantastic parlay piece. Mm-hmm. If you're looking for that, that's sneaky. Aaron's Aaron's put a beating on Nguyen and still couldn't get him out of there. Uh, so uh, like Zalal, I, Zalal is not going to stand there and get hit a bunch on the feet, but I do think Zalal takes him down and probably probably lays on him for good chunks of the fight. So. It's errands or nothing for me, but really overs might be the best way uh, to take that one. Move to the big boys. Carl Williams. Come on, Carl. Uh, the 10-1 and one, uh, oh, Carl Williams God. and Janata Denise. Yeah. So the story behind that one is we had a very sizable wager. I believe it was in his first fight uh, in mm-hmm. the UFC against Lucas Bresky. And we were just yelling and screaming. And, and, and it just come on, Carl, became the battling cry of the evening. He gets there and sure enough, he's ripped off three straight uh, decision unanimous wins. This is just your classic wrestler versus striker. Uh, who do you think pulls this one out? I, <laughs> I was very nervous about this in the beginning. I'm like, ah, Vince is good. He's got good striking. And I went back and watched both of their film. And the thing that I took away the most about Carl Williams, you see the takedown numbers. I'm like, well, this guy's a wrestler. Why do we have eight, nine takedowns? You know, that means the guy's getting back up. Well, here's the thing about Carl Williams. You may get back up, but he does not come detached from you. So those that chain wrestling, you can't call it like, you know, bantamweight chain wrestling, but he's not going to let somebody get back to their feet and step back to striking range. He is always in that pocket. Uh, he doesn't mess around at the start of a round. If he wants to wrestle, which he does, he gets right across that cage and closes the distance. So that's going to be a big problem for Dince. You know, I think Dince could clip him on the feet. That's going to be his wing condition is going to be round one knockout. Uh, And after that, this is just Carl Williams by whichever way he wants. And we've seen Carl just be the ultimate, you know, 35 miles an hour school zone type of fighter. Just cruise into the decision. Um, I don't know about this fight to go the distance. I worry a lot about Dins later on. That being said, they have this line at one and a half. I think yeah. this fight sails over one and a half pretty easily here. You know, at that point, I think Dins can hold on for, you know, seven and a half minutes uh, before his cardio completely gasses and he's up for that finish. But yeah, I think this is a good spot for Carl Williams to do what he does and derail this undefeated contender series hype train. We know how that works out. Yeah, I feel like if you like Jonathan Dents, you got to take the unders. If you like Carl, you got to take the overs because Carl's not even really looking too much to finish early. Mm-hmm. Like you said, I love that he doesn't he doesn't mask what he's trying to do. Within twenty seconds, he's on your legs trying to take you down, and then once he does, he, he, it's over for that round. Unless you have some insane like get up game and some great way to you know separate, he just sticks to you. And I just don't think Dents is that guy. Um, only 7-0 and of coming off a contender series. Boy, how many times have we seen this fighter lose? 7-0 yeah. <laughs> seven and, seven and zero coming off of a uh, contender series. Uh, credit to him that he does beat Austin Lane. Um, but uh, I, I, I just think Carl Williams is – this gameplay is just going to be too much for Dent. So I agree that Carl is the play. I like Carl by decision, but I think there is a world where Dent gets exhausted. Round three, like mm-hmm. I wonder what Carl Williams in round three might be. I could see Dince just wanting out of there. Um, you I'll know, be looking round... at it. I yeah, will certainly be looking at that. Yeah, yeah. So Carl Williams is a play, nice parlay piece. Or if you're comfortable laying the juice, you can get it around. Let's see what is Carl Williams right now? Yeah, minus two hundred five. It's that's not, not. Yeah, it's... that's fine. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Uh, if you think he's going to dominate like we do, it's worth playing. 
Carol Rosa and Penny Kianzad. Do you have the onions to put your hard-earned money on Penny Kianzad in this one? <laughs> that I do not. I yeah, see I another so. minus 205 that I really like in Carol Rosa. Uh, I thought she had an absolutely fantastic fight her last time out. The damage that was put on both sides, I mean, that was an absolute war. Absolute war against Aldana. Uh, the photo of the two of them at the hospital after that fight <laughs> yes. is one of the best pictures of the year last year. It was, I mean, we saw more damage in that fight than we've seen in some heavyweight main events this year. <laughs> okay, so they really went to war. It was back and forth. And, you know, going back and watching that, there were some really small moments that leaned, leaned towards uh, Carol losing that fight. It was really close at many points in that fight to where I thought she might even get the finish. Her striking looked better than it ever did. Uh, she's training uh, with her girlfriend, um, Gomez. Gomez is a striker. Uh, Rosa's going to have a huge advantage in the grappling if she decides to take it there. And I just kind of feel that Panny is one of these obsolete, you know, women's fighters. Like, you know, Landa Misfit Toys just... The sport is kind of passing her by at this point. She's looked lost on the ground. Um, I like Rosa, man. I, I don't know how she gets it done. Probably decision. But would I put it past her to be able to finish Panty on the ground? Most certainly not. Whether it be ground and pound, cut stoppage, the leg kicks look great. So I, I like Rosa in this spot, man. The only thing I worry is the amount of damage coming off that last fight. That's the only worry that I have, but it's been a while. So I have a feeling that she's healed up. I don't think she would take a fight. And I think there's a lesson to come out of that where she knows she was so close, so close. I think she's going to come out on fire in this one. Yeah, there, I, you, you can't. I mean, Peyton Kianzad's only win in her last, you know, four fights is Lena Landsberg. Mm -hmm. And then even before that, Alexa Davis, Eubanks, Beth Gray. I mean, all gone. They're all, all gone. gone. Yeah. Not and, and then you know loses to Pennington, Caleb Vera, Macy Chase. Yeah, her fight against Macy Chase on she had a she had a couple moments early, and then all of a sudden, bang! There she is, you know, getting tapped out. Mm -hmm. So I'm with you. Um, I would be terrified to take over in this one. It's minus four seventy five over two and a half. I'm with you that I think Panny Panny could get finished. I'm one. taking the under at that price. Absolutely. Like, I'm going to lay in that chalk. No way. Yeah, yeah. Plus 325, the under on Penny, who just got finished. Um, yeah. I'm with you that Rosa should win. I like Rosa's skill set a lot better than Penny. And I think you put it well. It's kind of a sport that maybe just has kind of passed her by there a little well, bit. Well, look at her so. profile picture. This is one of my favorite things on Tapology. Oh, yeah. We, we look up fighters and their profile pictures from 17 years ago, 15 <laughs> years ago. Like, can it's we get an point. update on what she looks like now and you can see how weathered she is? Because I mean, it ain't that. No, uh, it's to, not that. <laughs> it's, it's not that. So we like Carol Rosa over uh, Penny Keen's out. If you guys could hit the like button. And if you haven't joined the Discord, the link is in the description. I uh, just wanted to share this with you guys. Uh, our June, uh, our last week of July, July 29th through August 4th record for all sports. We're completely transparent on all of our plays. We went 8 and 3 plus 14 units, 45.6%. All right, six straight profitable weeks. And you guys can see some of the different sports that we do. I know most of you follow us for MMA. Really encourage you to join us on all these other sports. Uh, we've mm -hmm. got a long track record of doing well. And we are now at, we just we had a winning play. So now we're over this 98 units. We're at 100.8 units just for 2024. So um, doubling bankrolls in, in just under a year, uh, which is pretty spectacular. We're plus 91 units in 2023. So nice, nice long term success. And we've got a 5% UFC play that is up uh, over there on my profile page at Wager Talk. So if you just want one play, grab that one. 5-0 in our last five UFC MMA plays. Um, we've also got our NFL futures plus week one. So mm -hmm. if you like futures, we've hit 71% of them in the last 365 days. So one price, you can grab the NFL futures and you're going to get all of our NFL week one plays. But best deal, buy two months and get August free. So all you need to do is get, uh, get uh, click on this add to cart and you're going to see an instant 33% discount. So you're going to get three months starting now. So I encourage you to get that now. Each and every day that goes through August, you're losing one day mm -hmm. out of the month. So get that includes all sports, 
all 5% plays. NFL and college football is right around the corner. Uh, Formula One will be back before we know it for, for from summer break. NASCAR will be back, all those other sports. So those are the things we have going up. A lot of great plays that uh, that we've had over the summer. We told everybody. There, everyone was like, ah, dog days of summer. Uh-uh-uh. We have absolutely flourished, and uh, we're really, really proud of that. So uh, encourage everyone to take advantage of that, wagertalk.com. Uh, Charles Lampos, Gregorio, and Toshioma Kazama. Uh, it's a Kazama fight. Give me the under. There's oh, my breakdown. Wow. I don't too. care who wins. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? That's me too. That's it. That's, that's what I yeah, planned in this Kazama. I don't it's want a part of a side here. It's an under. <laughs> <laughs> You've got... Kazama, who's gotten starched by Nakamura mm-hmm. and Garrett Armfield. He also uh, got starched by uh, Saito at Pound Storm. Pound Storm. I must be the only what? fighter in that promotion because that's what the is, only time I've ever seen that one. What is Pound Storm? Uh, I mean, listen, I'll be the first to admit, I thought this said Pancreas. And I was like, oh, that's an odd name. Uh, it's an odd fight league. Uh, Apparently, they're big into digestion. Um, so it's <laughs> it's just a Kazama fight. I, Gregorio, listen, he has cardio. A good couple minutes. You can get mm-hmm. some good cardio out of him. He just got so gassed against Chad and Ellinger. Uh, but on Contender Series, gets you know he can get finishes. Um, I think this is going to be exciting first round. Wouldn't surprise me if it didn't even make it out of the first I round. I agree. So. Yeah, I think somebody um, gets starched in this pretty quick. And I'm kind of surprised that you can get under one and a half at plus one ten. Yeah, that's a that's, that's playable. A, that's absolutely playable. So it's a Kazama fight. I don't care who wins. Just give me the under. Uh, Yana Santos and Chelsea Chandler. Here's your girl. That's right. Uh, that looks natural. Not come on. That's all right. First it's off, all because she stopped breastfeeding. Him. Okay, first she off, that is right Photoshop. There. Give me a break. Look at the, <laughs> come on. Looks like the new Alien movie coming out. <laughs> Give me a break. Yana Santos' abs do not look like that. She looks. <laughs> she's cut and pasted onto Ar- Ariani Carnalosi's body. I mean, <laughs> come just, on. That man. being said, I did. I did tell you. I was like, you know, I went back and watched Yana Santos' uh, uh, fight against. Um, uh, 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 Carol Rosa and I went back and watched the house she lost on Danya, and I was like, Yeah, she's on, she's on the good vitamins. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, what do you like about this one, Santos and Chelsea Chandler? The bull in the china shop, Chelsea Chandler. She's not a bull, <laughs> she she pulls this big, she's in a she's, china shop. Though. I'm a, I'm, she's in a china shop, all right. Um, she pulls this game, she's a bully, and this, okay, who'd she bully? Who'd she bully? I'll wait. A girl that was what seven inches shorter than her, with no ground game that she couldn't finish. Correct. Okay. <laughs> she bullied Great. her. Norma Demont. She made Norma Demont almost look like a knockout artist. Made her Big, made her look like a Kurt Angle in his prime with the wrestling and take Oh balls. God, it was brutal. Uh, Stoli Aranko, we know, likes to pull guard oh. and end up in bottom. And if she doesn't get this armbar, <laughs> she's done. So I don't think she's beaten anybody. The big question is, is she going to make weight? Uh, I'm liking Yana Santos more and more and more here. Um, I think that's a big deal. Like, I, I, look, she's on the good vitamins. We, Tiago's been busted for the good mi- vitamins, too. I mean, what do you think? One Are you trying to tell me that Yana team? isn't sampling uh, Let's Tiago's just say they're, sh- they're sharing dinners every night. I have a feeling they're consuming the same thing. Um <laughs> But I think this is a really winnable fight for her. I don't think Chelsea Chandler's that good. I just don't. I think she is lost on the feet, and her ground game is very overrated. Uh, her work rate is very bad um, and sloppy, just sloppy. So if this is an at-range striking battle, Yana Santos is just going to piece her up and probably win a decision. I think she's smart enough. She wants a win. I don't think she's really even going to hunt a finish because uh, she needs a win. So... She gets that W, she keeps her job, and can keep on fighting. Hopefully she passes her uh, post-fight test. This is squarely in the category of fade the uniform theory. Uh, Chelsea Chandler has still not figured out how to get the right support Mm -hmm. on the ladies. Um, Every time she fights, they're bouncing all around, and we cashed a fade the the uniform theory on PFL. It was a live 
It was a live fit. And the, the theory behind the fade the uniform is if you're a professional athlete and you cannot get your uniform right, what are the odds you can get a fight right? The, the sport right. So <laughs> this is a great time. I, she had such a yeah. size advantage over Nunez. Like it was just, it was, it was wild. She's not going to have that here. Mm-hmm. I think there's going to be moments of clinching where they try and catch her breath. But I call Chelsea Chandler bull in the China shot because she just, her, her strikes are so unorthodox. She's just swinging. Mm-hmm. She's wild. I have this picture that she's just constantly knocking things over in her house, like <laughs> lamps or just <laughs> like cups coming the up end the table counter. Yeah, just stubbing <laughs> her toe constantly, yeah. just <laughs> constantly knocking things over. Uh, I have Yana Santos. It's playable big time at minus 142. Mm-hmm. So um, one thing I noticed about Santos, I went back and watched that with Donnie fight. She just came out like a bull in a china shop and mm-hmm. uh, got – finished um because she was too over anxious she was patient against holly home holly home just put on a veteran performance and then rosa that was so close was well, holly really... was also wasn't holly her first fight back yes from the kids you, you right? see that so, you see the big yeah yeah mm-hmm. that was a fade the baby theory yep um which we nailed and rosa that's a split as we always say about split decisions one judge changes one round mm-hmm. you know it's win so i thought it was um that was a pretty decent performance, but I'm with you that Santos is is the play. I'm not playing Chelsea Chandler. I just don't – there's levels to this, and I think Chandler's – when she's not going to be able to get Santos to the ground, it's just going to be too much of an uphill battle. So, Danny Barlow, Nikolai Veritenikov, I believe is how his name is pronounced. Uh, Danny Barlow, it appears, is, I guess, just one of the most, like, Hard, hardest punching UFC guys in the UFC, just pound for pound, whatever. What do you like about his chances here against Nikolai? Well, I think there's going to be a time to get Danny Barlow. You know, we're seeing that 8 0. Like we say, these guys don't retire undefeated. Danny Barlow is not finishing his career undefeated. He's nope. just not. Well, unless he quits now, but <laughs> we'll see from there. I have a feeling he's not quitting now. I think he's going to make no, it into the cage quitting. this weekend. Um, Not really impressed with the fact that he knocked out Josh Quinlan. I think that was a pretty gettable fight as far as that goes, the non-steroid Josh Quinlan. Um, His fight in Contender Series, he did what he was supposed to do. Uh, I do think he has advantage in this fight. This is probably not the time that you're going to be able to get Danny Barlow. I think he wins this fight. Odds are this is going to be a knockout, this fight. So I like this fight not to go the distance. Uh... Nikolai is just a march forward striker, and that is going to just walk right into Barlow's strikes. Um, he does sometimes enter- entertain the wrestling, but I wouldn't classify him as a grappler by nature uh, in his fighting style. So I think Barlow's going to catch him on the feet at some point. I just think that uh, Barlow is very accurate and long. He's going to have a, a reach advantage. And that left hand is no joke. It isn't. He, he can really punch. But I have a real hard time with everybody getting on the hype of his left hand. Oh, that left hand is like, well, listen, if you go into an MMA fight with one weapon and one weapon only, at some point somebody's going to expose you. Okay? Yeah. Somebody's going to expose you. And the, but they're going to expose him with the ground game or the punching combinations or forward pressure. Um, I don't think Nicolay is the guy to do so. So give me Danny Barlow in the spot. We have another big Numbers crazy, by the way. Yeah, we have. A, yeah, I maybe we have another big red flag here with this, these guys making their UFC debut in their mid thirties. Like, he had a chance uh, 2021 against Michael Morales. Michael Morales was as young, young mm-hmm. Marco uh, Morales. But um, you know, he goes to United Fight League, wins a few more. But we saw this on some of these contender series guys. The guys, the the Magomed, the Magomeds, uh, yes. where it was like, oh wow, no wonder UFC hasn't given these guys a chance mm-hmm. until now. Where you so been? a guy who's <laughs> yeah, a welterweight who's thirty four making his UFC debut that says a lot. So it's Barlow, and if you're taking Barlow, you're probably playing it by knockout. I've watched Nikolai. I think he's slow on the feet. I just think mm-hmm. he's too slow. I think Barlow catches him, and I'll be honest, I. I don't think it's going to be that difficult for Barlow to catch a few of them, unless Nikolai pulls out the wrestling that we really haven't seen too much before, you know, an elite wrestling game. But, yeah, Barlow's day is coming. That mm-hmm. that that we're, we'll, we'll find it. We'll yep. He's, he's going to get a matchup, <laughs> and we'll absolutely find it. Chepe Mariscal and Damon Jackson. Chepe Mariscal coming off of a loss against Mor- – wait, they gave him the win in that fight? They, they gave Chepe the win? That one? Oh, yeah. 
Remember that one? <laughs> yes, I <laughs> the, do the, remember that. The, the, whatever. Huh? I went back and watched it. I that one was, was even worse yeah. than I remember it being. It uh, but whatever. Uh, what do you like about Chepe and Damon Jackson? I'm torn on this one, man. I, I've had a real hard time with this fight uh, in tape study. I really have. On one hand, I think Damon Jackson is getting to the point where I want to fade him. I think his career is pretty much peaked. You know, look at the age. We're getting up there. Not really impressed with the win over Alexander Hernandez. The guy's a head case already. I kind of, I actually picked him to win in that spot. Uh, losing to Billy Quill Q, losing to Danny Ige. Could kind of see that coming. The knockout of Pat Sabatini. Pat Sabatini has no striking at all. And Damon Jackson threw a front kick, which he's never thrown before in his entire life. And Sabatini's chin happened to be there. So there's nothing that I've really seen from Damon Jackson skill-wise that's saying that he's improving. I think he's a finished product, and he kind of is what he is at this point. Chepe Mariscal is a bit of an enigma for me. Uh, I see so much hype with this guy, and then you just go back and watch these fights, and I firmly believe that he was on his way to losing the Jack Jenkins fight. I think that was going to be Jack Jenkins by decision. And then here comes the arm injury. I think he lost the fight to Sherry A. So he did. He, he absolutely he's coming lost off that two fight. losses in my book. <laughs> Right? He got gifted Trevor Peak, the, the newest windmill fighter <laughs> that just swings wild and survive. Look, Chepe's got a great chin. I'll give you that. Uh, he's susceptible to leg kicks. So I want to see where this is going to go. I'm not going to go anywhere with this fight until I find something that is really going to lean me one way or another. Maybe I'll see something at face offs. I don't even have the gusto to give you guys a side, a total. Nothing. So this fight so far is a complete pass for me. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of really playable things on this card to me. This one's a stay away. I Chepe's ready to be beat. If you're playing it, you're playing Damon Jackson. I mean, he's he got gifted two wins in a row, and that catches up against Morgan Cherry. He like tried to wrestle and take down, and it, and it didn't look, look good doing it. Like he couldn't, he like couldn't really get the takedowns. He looked, it looked like they implemented a game plan that he was just completely not used to. Um, so I'm wondering what's going on there. And at the same time, Damon Jackson and his beautiful hair. Got to give a shout out to Damon Jackson and his hair. Um, just to stay away. I have no plays mm -hmm. on this one. Now, if, da if Damon Jackson comes out with the Turkish hair plugs, we have a Turkish hair plug theory going. There, we could. Yeah, if he wins, we might have to re-examine it. So. <laughs> you got to check um, for the hair plugs there. I actually met up uh, with my buddy on Saturday. Uh, he he did the Turkish hair plugs thing. Um Looks incredible. They looks do a great incredible. Job. They, they, they I, look I so understand good. why everybody goes there. Yes, I do too. Yeah. I did too. I, I looked at it, I was like, dude, you need a haircut. I was like, I can't believe I'm saying that. You need a haircut. Your hair's too long. <laughs> uh Chris Gutierrez now. Oh one of the most bettable plays on the card was the Gutierrez Basharat over. Oh yeah. Um now he's fighting Quang Lee. I don't even know if we have uh lines for it. Um to me, this is a uh a Gutierrez or nothing, but I really don't have a whole lot of breakdown. I, I, I guess Quang Lee's kind of exciting. Um, he looks to be, you know, kind of a uh, push the pace. Um, I'm not going to play anything. You? Uh, I'm going to look and see the lines when they come out. I mean, that's going to determine whether we play something or not. We, we got to see the lines first. Uh, I think Lee's going to catch a couple legs of leg kicks from Gutierrez and say, oh, crap. <laughs> this ain't the LFA anymore. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> so uh, I think this could be your classic Chris Gutierrez accumulation of leg kicks, mercy stoppage, late. Uh, these Asian fighters, man, they love violence. For mm -hmm. or against, they just create it. You know, this guy's got an extensive amateur career. If you look at his wins, a lot of them by finish. We got some good ones in there. His losses, a few of them by finish sprinkled in. I just, this is such a tough ask for this kid. Such a tough ask. And Gutierrez can win a kickboxing match on short notice and have absolutely no problem. So mm -hmm. uh, give me give me Gutierrez by mercy stoppage. We'll see what the lines are when they come out. It's amazing. They tell these contender series guys, like, be ready. Mm -hmm. You know, this guy, Quangley was supposed to fight on contender series. Now he's fighting in the co-main. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess it's not really that. Doesn't say a lot about UFC, does it? What do you mean? Say Someone drops out in the co-main, you got to yank mm. somebody off contender series? 
Well, you don't have anybody this is waiting the state in the that wings? we're in, man. Uh, these guys that are ranked, they don't want to fight. Everybody is so they treat it like a business. It's not about who's the baddest man on the planet anymore and the toughest. It's it's about money, and uh, they treat it that way, and, and and we have to treat it that way as as betters now. Is that you know when you see two guys ready to choke each other at faceoffs, you can be damn sure that fight's going the distance. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen that over and over again, it's right? True, it is a business. It's a business now, so we have to treat it that way. And you know, you don't want to be the sucker picking finishes just because of talk at faceoffs. It's so, the opposite. It's the, total the more opposite. aggressive the faceoff, the more mm-hmm. the more likely it is to go the over. So yep. yeah, you're probably right. All right, we're gonna do the main event, and then we're gonna do our parlay buster and our woulda, coulda, shoulda bet of the evening. Marcin Tabura, Sergey Spivak, who you got? This fight is so perplexing to me. I'm seeing a ton of love for Tabora. Why is he plus 130? Size? I think he's going to come in a little bit smaller, right? Well, these two have fought before, and he dominated the fight. He really did. He dominated that fight against Spivak. I think the scorecards were 30-27, 30-27, 29-28. It was so long ago, and Spivak that's, has gotten so much That's better. the thing. I like Spivak in this spot. But everybody's talking about Tabora, and he's still an underdog. So something is fishy in this main event to me. I, something doesn't smell right. I don't know what it is. Why are we having this rematch that nobody <laughs> wanted? <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, okay, we, do we have a guy whose contract is up? I think this might be the last fight of Spivak's contract. Uh Tabora, I don't think has looked good at all. I mean, just that knockout against Aspinall. I know it's Tom Aspinall, but like, he just looks stiff. And like a win over Tai Tuivasa, a guy who is openly only fighting because of paychecks. Keep that in mind when he fights in a couple weeks. I can't put any credit in that. He's there to get paid and support his family. He's not there to win titles. And it was. We all know what the weakness is for him, too. Take him down, work him on the ground. I mean, that was the biggest take your ball and go home I think I've ever seen from Ty. It was like, <laughs> oh, all right, it's over. I'll just be done now. Um, I like Spivak. I'm scared off this fight. No plays for me yet. I do think it goes a while. So maybe like the over two and a half or an over three and a half as a parlay piece. Uh, but I am not on a side as of yet. That's interesting because I'm pretty passionate about the under three and a half. Wow. Okay. So Spivak, I think to me, it's all about Spivak. If he gets you down in the first round and he can work those arm triangles and those chokes, uh, great. We saw him do it against, against Greg Hardy, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> which listen, Greg Hardy sucks. We know that, but he did it. Gus Sky did what he should have done. Derek Lewis did what he should have done. Holy cow, when he couldn't get Cyril gone down, his cardio was gone. And we talk about cardio on the ground versus cardio on the feet. Spivak, this man has no cardio on the feet. Like, it goes down as a gone knockout. That was that was Spivak was dead to the world on the feet. He could not get mm-hmm. it to the ground, and his cardio was over. So, to me, Spivak is either going to get to Burrow on the ground work him into some kind of submission or ground and pound. And it's going to be over early or Tabura is going to kind of thwart the advances. He's going to fight it off and Spivak's going to be absolutely gassed. And it's only minus minus one thirty under three and a half. I was stunned that it was three and a half. I figured okay. it would be one and a half or two and a half. I'm, wow. I'm, I'm okay. perplexed at how they got to this one. I mean, look at Spivak like round two, round one, round two, Round one, round one. Okay, Alexei Olenek, that's an over like machine. Yeah. Uh, Vandera, like, like he, he's had one fight go outside of the second round. Um, I, I just, I don't think this sees rounds four or five. No way, no way do I see this with, with, with it. And you look at Tabora, and you know, Tabora's there, gets Ty out of there early, Aspinall gets him out of there early. Uh, even off, that's another decision that's, machine. That's Bogoy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Bogoy, who's, who's an ultimate like this. And this this Romanoff fight was so hilarious. I, I remember being yes. in Las Vegas watching that one. Um, I don't know. I, I 
I th- I think Tabora either gets finished in the first round or he finishes off Spivak in round two or three because I just don't think Spivak has the has the cardio. So I don't care who wins. I take the under um, in this one. So very uh, good, a very interesting point. It's interesting we're on the opposite sides there because I, I look I, I would lean towards Andy's breakdown on this before mine because I flat out I don't have a good read on this fight. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's take a look at the parlay buster. This is a fight that we think everyone's going to put in their parlays. We're a little bit concerned about it. Who do you think is going to be the one busting parlays this week? Hmm. Give me a scroll down there. Sure. Who's going to be in every parlays? The line. I mean, look. Uh, do we just take the steepest line on the card here? <laughs> yeah, you could. You I mean, Zalal is good. Mean, Zalal going to be mine. Anytime you put Zalal in a minus 455, you're asking for trouble. That's, all right. That's that's mine. So that's what you got. All right, so Andy's got Zalal. I mean, I'm going to throw... Hmm. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't want to give one out I don't like. I think we're... I, that's the one I got to go with, man. I don't see it. Uh, Dince is plus money, so he's not going to be in everybody's parlays. I don't think Carl drops the ball. Other than that, I, you know, I could say, all right, Luciano's a favorite, right? Yeah, she's 170. Yeah. So first fight of the night, everybody loves parlay in the first fight of the night. <laughs> You're right. There you go. You're Alan right. Carr, by decision, that. blows everybody's parlays on the first fight of the night. All right, our first two. Uh, so be careful if you've got the Luciano Zalal, <laughs> Zalal parlay. All right. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. This is the fight or the bet. At the end of the evening, we were going, my God, why didn't we make all the money in the world off of that one? So what's the one we're going to regret not laying the mortgage on? I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with Cal Rosa. I, I'm just liking her more and more throughout <laughs> Fading this Fading panic. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it, again, it's like, I like Cal Rosa, <laughs> but she's also fighting panty cans at. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Cal Rosa as my man. Should have just played Carol straight on the money line. Don't mess around. Take the profits and run. It's a great pick. Uh, any anytime you can be in the business of fading Panty and Zod, you're you're in a good place. Um, I, I'm going to go with Carl Williams when he's hovering around this minus two hundred. When you've got a guy who absolutely could be labeled a fraud who has no ground game going up against Carl Williams, who's just Absolutely waxed three guys by wrestling all three of them he, he for is three rounds. A ground game. <laughs> yeah, so so Dins has no ground game, and this could be one of those where Carl Williams is standing next to the ref as the as they're reading the scorecards, and you're like, it's either thirty twenty seven or thirty twenty six uh, mm. for Carl Williams. You're like, why didn't we just lay the farm on Carl? You knew Dins didn't have anything for him. So the biggest selling point to me is that Carl has a very good game plan. He sticks to it. He does not screw around on the feet. So I think that might be uh, the woulda, coulda, shoulda. So woulda, coulda, shoulda is Carol. Ro- Look at this. The first four fights of, 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 of yep. the night. So we're warning you against putting Luciano and Zalal in your parlays. And then uh, we're thinking to ourselves. And then fire hey, away. Rosa. <laughs> <laughs> then, then fire away on Rosa and Carl Williams as your woulda, coulda, shoulda. So, all right, guys, if you have to hit the like button, uh, do that now. Join the discard and make sure you leave us a comment in the comments section. It really helps the algorithm out. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. We're creeping up on 200 subscribers. We just started this channel a little bit ago. So all the appreciation and uh, uh, support that you guys have given us is uh, is very, very much needed. And we really, really want to say thank you. So subscribe, like, leave a comment. Good luck on your plays and we'll see you in our next video. And get those all sport plays. It's dog days of summer. But we've been printing money this whole summer on these oddball plays. So get up in there. Good luck on UFC. We'll see you guys next time.